I'm going to bring in my colleague, Fox News Sunday anchor Chris Wallace, moderated debate number one. Chris, how you doing? And good afternoon to you. These stories pop up every day in a, with you. in a different part of the country. What are we to make as we follow this ping pong and this bouncing ball on new ballots and bad ballots in various states? Well, uh, look, uh, obviously the system is going to be stressed. There were about 33 million uh, mail-in votes, absentee and mail-in votes in the, the 2016 election. We're probably going to get double that. 60 to 70 million. Uh, I, I, the only thing I'd say about this particular case is they found it, they fixed it. So, uh, mm. you know, it's it, you know it, it's like King. I remember as a kid reading about King yeah. Canut, who was who would sit down at the at the edge of the water and tell the waves to stop rolling in. They're not <laughs> going to ro stop rolling in. We're going to get tens of millions mm. of ballots, and we ought to do everything we can to try to make sure that they're accurate and and that. Uh, they're counted, and we get a, a fair and mm -hmm. legitimate election. Uh, in the meantime, we're going to go to the board in a moment here. We'll show that's my little yeah. lesson about King. That's my lesson about <laughs> King Canut today. Nice, I, I like it. Share it with your kids. Pass the word. I'm going to show the folks at home just how many people are voting early in a moment here. But uh, th there's this dust up that happened again today um, among the uh, the man who was supposed to moderate debate number two in in Florida, Steve Scully. And apparently he, sa he sent out this tweet last night. It came off his account. It went to Anthony Scaramucci. It said, do I respond to Trump? Again, it's dated October 8th. It's since been deleted. Uh, he apparently says he's been hacked. And just moments ago, there were reports that uh, back in 2012 and 2013, the Scully reported again that he had been hacked in both of those years. Now, I don't know. Was it a hack? Were these what they're called direct messages? Was it filed incorrectly. I will, what, what, what do you believe the state of play right now is for the debate commission that seems to be on some level um, fighting for credibility? Well, uh, I, I, all I know is what I'm told. Uh, I, I can't go in and, uh, as you know, I'm not even on Twitter, so I don't even fully understand it. And I have to say, one more good reason not to be on Twitter, what happened today, uh, but, but Steve Scully is an honorable man. Uh, he's a fair reporter. Um, he says, and the commission says, that he was hacked. Uh, that it, and by hacked, I don't mean that they, you know, like John Podesta, where they hacked and they were able to dredge out, uh, you know, emails that he'd actually sent. Scully says that he never sent this email. Somebody else using his account, getting into his account, sent it for him. Uh, or Senator, on, uh, you know, uh, using his name, uh, and until it's contradicted, I'm going to believe Steve Scully. He has a very good reputation in this business, and uh, I find it hard to believe that he would be lying about mm. this. What is in addition yeah. to which, I should say, Scully, in addition, says he has no relationship with Scaramucci, and the only time he's ever had any conversation with him was when he mm -hmm. spoke to him twice years ago on C-SPAN. Yeah, you, did you see the clip of Peter Ducey in Las Vegas earlier in the hour? He was asking about second debate. Um, what, what, uh, Joe Biden apparently said he doesn't think it'll happen. I mean, clearly it's not gonna happen right now. There still could be a third debate, so if you wanna move second debate to number three, and whether or not you can get all this in in the next three weeks is a question mark. How do you believe it plays out when you've got Biden doing a town hall on ABC on Thursday when we all thought that America would be watching the two men back on stage in Miami before voters on that same night? Well, I think the debate on the 15th is dead, and there is not going to be a debate on the 29th. There's no reason, you know, we were talking five days before an election. There's not a chance in the world that the Biden camp will agree to that. Uh, the Biden camp, I have to say, has been pretty straightforward in this whole thing. They said there are three debates that were set forward for the president and he to, to be together. Uh, mine on September 29th, the 15th, and the 22nd. And the president, I think, made a big mistake when he pulled out of the, 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 the second debate, when it was made a virtual debate. Uh, you know, <laughs> the man who wrote The Art of the Deal should understand you can only negotiate when you have leverage. And he has no leverage because he's behind in the polls right now. So, yes, I can understand why he would have preferred an in-person debate to a virtual debate. But a virtual debate is a lot better than no debate. Mm -hmm. And that's what he's going to end up with on the 15th. Mm -hmm. And I think there probably will be a debate, one more debate on the 22nd. 
just as the commission always said. Uh, Strassel writes in the Wall Street Journal, more than 20 million Americans watch Wednesday's debate, and many were likely getting the facts about the Bernie Biden agenda for the first time. What she's going after there is um, whether or not Mike Pence was able to uh, fire a few shots at Kamala Harris in the agenda. Did you, how did you see this debate the other night while you were watching um, from the comfort of your home, I assume, this time around, Chris? Yes. Uh, well, the comfort from this studio, but yes. Uh, I, I thought Pence did a good job. And, you know, that's one of the other problems with the president summarily on Thursday morning pulling out of the debate. There are a lot of Republicans who would have been happy to have the storyline of what Mike Pence did on Wednesday night play out for a few days. Questions about uh, the, 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 what they call radical left-wing agenda uh, of the Biden-Harris team. Uh, the question that, uh, that Harris refused to answer, as Biden has refused to answer, about whether or not they would pack the court. Those are all very good questions. Still are and questions. And things that w would have normally come out of that, out of that debate. But they didn't because of the fact that the president jumped in and said he wasn't going to hold his de debate if it was virtual. Yeah. Uh, the thing about the Supreme Court question is it hasn't been answered yet. And you know from your own experience, Chris, the longer you go without answering a question, the bigger the story it becomes. And this has really become a story around the Biden campaign. Would you not agree? Absolutely. I, I, and I don't think, you know, we, what do we got? A little bit more than three weeks. I guess it's uh, 23, 25 days until the election. I don't think that uh, Biden and Harris are going to be able to hold on. And, and look at the answer that Biden gave yesterday. He said, look, if I give you my answer, it's going to be the headline. Well, so what is it he's going to say? I assume you know, what would be the headline? Uh, you would think that would be, if it's mm -hmm. going to be a big headline. If he says, I'm not going to pack the court, that's not a big headline, that I'm going to pack the court. So it certainly raises questions, and I think it's impossible. And frankly, I think it would be foolish for Biden to try to hold out and refuse to talk about this for the next 25 days. I understand why he's doing it, because if he says, I'm going to pack the court, that turns off a lot of uh, more moderate voters. And if he says, I'm not going to pack the court, that turns off people on the left wing of the Democratic Party. But I don't think you can walk this tightrope for yeah. three plus weeks and get away with it. Nice to see you, Chris. See you on Sunday.